But Moses is also, as the deliverer, I think she's bringing in the fact that, um, this sounds kind of crazy, but that June is the deliverer. And that's why she quoted some of those verses to her. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that she actually is referring to the baby as Moses. I think she mm. might be referring to June as Moses. Everybody. We're the good doctors of Abbey Research. I'm Dr. Erin. I am Dr. Kristen. And you are exceptionally welcome to our tiny little corner of the internet where we are here to talk about The Handmaid's Tale, Season 5, Episode 7, No Man's Land. And if you joined us for Episode 6, you will know that we were pretty convinced this was going to be a bottle episode just focusing on Serena and June and Serena's impending um, birth or giving birth. And, uh, yeah, that's what happened. Boy, was it a doozy. Um, before we get into, uh, what happened in this episode and our thoughts and feelings, a reminder, if you enjoy our content and you would like even more Handmaid's Tale content, um, in the downstairs, you will find a link to our Patreon where for five US dollars and seven Canadian dollars, and I think like two British pence, with the exchange rate, I kid. Um, I think it's probably about five pounds. Uh, you can join us and uh, catch up on all our Mayday moments, which are exclusively for our patrons, and a little bit of extra analysis that we give for those of you who are fantastically joining us on our Patreon. This week's uh, Mayday moment is going to be a discussion of what justice means, because mm, by the end of this episode, we had a couple different ideas uh, Luke was Luke in this episode. Um, he is entirely understandable and equally frustrating. Um, but Hashtag men. <laughs> he's just he's just such a he's just such a dude in such in dude. these episodes. It's just like such peak dude and vibes yeah. coming off of Luke. God love him. Totally understandable. Very very frustrating. Um, so. If you would like to join us for those Mayday moments and catch all the Mayday moments for episodes one through six, join us on the Patreon. We love our patrons. We're having such a fantastically fun time having these conversations with y'all over there. So hi, patrons. Thanks for joining us. We love you guys. All right. Episode seven, No Man's Land, which is just both where we are literally and where Serena is metaphorically. Thank you for that on the nose analysis at the end there, June Osborne. Um, but you know, surprising no one, Serena's in labor. We get that really convincingly on the flashback. Um, and through some weird machinations, June is driving, Serena is still holding a gun, accidentally fires, crashes the car. June tries to leave her, whatever. We all knew it was gonna happen. June can't leave her. She stays in the barn uh, and she helps Serena through the labor. We also get flashbacks, OG flashbacks to like the start of June being placed with the Waterfords. So we'll talk about those. Um, I will say the writing on this episode was fantastic. It we really both was. talked about online and offline our expectations for this episode and how good it could be and it exceeded both our expectations um it is one of the best episodes this show has produced full stop um and i saw bradley whitford say on twitter that if this episode doesn't get you von strahovski her emmy there is no justice oh in the world God. and i co-sign that i co-sign that i co-sign that if that like i know that woman has already had a baby so she knows how to act having a baby, but she was phenomenal in this episode. The two of them were absolute powerhouses. Scientology aside, ugh, Elizabeth Moss is just too good at her job. Um, but you guys know us. We are cynical. We have critiqued this show 
for days on end. I have been burned. We've been burned so much. And I feel like this whole season is just like ointment on our burns. It really is. Like, yes, you know, I mean, the bowling alley scene aside, um, <laughs> the brief detour Torture back to our PTSD, to our, to our trauma. Yeah. Um, no, it's been, they really just had to kill Fred. Cool. Really just, I texted, I texted Kristen last night um, after the Phils went to the World Series. What, what? We were texting back and forth. Yes. Glory, praise be the Philadelphia flipping Phillies um, going to the World Series. Uh, but I texted her last night. I was like, they really just needed to kill Fred, man. I didn't yeah, know. So I didn't watch it till this morning because paying attention to anything but baseball yesterday <laughs> was not going to happen. So I am fresh. Fresh off the episode. Um, yeah. yeah, but it was just... Uh, and you so as I was as I was saying, you know, we're very cynical. Um, I like legit cried at last night's episode or this week last week's episode. I was like actually tearful several times um, and goosebumps. So, you know, the, Dr. Kristen's cold dead heart aside, yeah. I have even had a hard time accessing emotions through my cynicism and frustration. But they got there um, because it was that good. So. The, the guts of this entire episode are in the barn um, and June helping Serena with her labor. And then that was juxtaposed with flashbacks to June's first experience as a handmaid with another handmaid who is in labor. Um, and so they arrive at Commander Clarence's house, I'm assuming, because the handmaid was called of Clarence. Um, the black wife, the lone black wife we have seen, appears uh, again. So thanks for that level of inclusion. I don't know. Um, but June and, and Serena arrive late to the party. The handmaid is already in labor. Um, and so all of the flashbacks happen around that. Um, the labor does not go well. They end up having to perform an emergency C-section. The baby survives. The handmaid does not. Um, and so we get a lot of parallels between that instance and then Sir, what's happening with Serena and the choices Serena is making and how she thinks about being a mother and a whole, whole bunch of stuff. We even get some real uh, significant um, theology coming from Serena, which I know, Kay, you want to talk about. Um, but... Yeah, that's the, the the guts of this episode. Maybe Noah, as he is named. No pressure, Noah. Um, the savior of humanity, Serena says, is born in the barn, and June convinces her to go to hospital. Serena reveals to her that she is basically the Wheeler's handmaid. And the look on June's face where she was like, as hard as that must be for you. <laughs> like... You, you have to go to the hospital. You have to go to the... I'm so sorry that you maybe feel an ounce of what it felt like for me to be your sexual slave for five years. But medication. Um, convinces her to go to the hospital. She gets treatment. Noah gets treatment. Um, and at the end, um, Luke shows up and kind of, uh, you know kind of just pours, pours a, I don't know, oil all over this lovely scene that, that Serena and June have created in this lovely peace that they have between the two of them. Um, he has called immigration. Serena is illegally inside Canada um, because she has lost her diplomatic status as soon as she left the Gilead's information center or whatever. Um, so she is going to be detained as an undocumented person and Noah is being taken by CPS. And again, Yvonne Strahovski hits it out of the park. Um, June is clearly very upset by this and Luke calls it justice. So um, our discussion of justice will be in our Mayday moment, but that is um, the guts of this episode and what happens so, so much. So much I know that we both want to talk about in terms of what these women realized about themselves and each other. Um, Kristen, where would you like to begin? What would you like to talk about? Oh God, uh, do you want me to crack on with the two Bible verses that she 
let's that let's do the says? Bible verses. Yeah, because okay. I do, I don't know how many more. Oh, we do want to talk about the conversation about why she didn't kill. Yeah, Serena. Um, but let's yeah. do the Bible verses, and then we can talk about Serena and June. Yeah, and Serena's apology. Which BFFs. Is wild. <laughs> um, BFFs, Serena and June. Okay, so she talks about a baby. She recites scriptures about a baby who is hidden in a basket in bulrushes. Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. Wasn't that, uh, ooh, Moses? It was. <gasps> ding, 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 ding. Um, and the verse that she recites right before that, Moses actually says to the Israelite people during their exodus wandering through the desert. So I found it very interesting that she recites two verses about Moses and no verses about Noah. And um, yeah, it names the, cause that's why I was confused when she was talking about like hiding the baby in the, and I was like, yeah. wait a second, that's not Noah. Yeah. So the first verse that she recites, which let's, let me pull it up here, um, is from Deuteronomy chapter 32, 43, which is literally called the song of Moses. <laughs> it is, it's like, that's the subheading in, in the scriptures. Um, and they use the English standard version um, whenever they quote scripture. So rejoice with him, O heavens, bow down to him, all gods, for he avenges the blood of his children, takes vengeance on his adversaries. He repays those who hate him and cleanses his people's land. Again, a reminder that Gilead does not have the New Testament. Mm. Gilead does not have mercy. We see that that um, and grace, they don't have those concepts. And part of that is why Serena has such a difficult time understanding that what June is offering her is grace and mercy. Yeah. You cannot yeah. earn grace. You can, you cannot, it, it's not merit based. Um, and in that moment, you know, in this episode, June is the Christian truly like that's how she behaves. She, um, seeks, you know, seeks safety for people. I even loved the moment where like, as she whispers to herself, praise be after mm -hmm. Noah is born, because mm -hmm. like birth is still a miracle. Like yeah. even, even in our world, I got to meet a three week old baby last week and like sitting there holding him. I was just like, you, you are the tiniest little person, but you're a fully formed person at three weeks. Like, yeah. And like listening to my friend talk about her birthing experience, which compared to other people was not, you know, dramatic or traumatic or anything, but was still dramatic and traumatic because giving birth is that it's like, you just want to hold, you do want to hold every single baby as a miracle. You really, yeah. really do. Yeah. Um, and so I liked that small moment from June, this, re this continued recognition that there are, I guess, powers bigger than her. Yeah. Um, and that all Gilead has done is just manipulate those powers. Right. They They don't actually speak for those powers. Um, but then, what, then when Serena flips to essentially say that she's going to be Moses' mother. So the story of Moses is that Moses was born um, to, like... A, a refuge, like a slave, essentially. Yeah. And he was going to get killed. And so she put him in a basket made of bulrushes. He was in Egypt at the time. This is Moses lived his most of his life in Egypt. Um, and he had no idea that he was Jewish at all um, because the, that basket floated its way down to the royal palace where the queen of Egypt desperately wanted a son. And so took the baby from the bulrushes and raised Moses as her own. In Moses' adult life, he finds out that he's in fact an Israelite. Israelites are the slaves of the Egyptian people. They built the pyramids. They serve as their, they served as their handmaids and their house um, servants and probably some, a lot other nefarious things, knowing some of the Egyptian worship practices at that era in Egyptian history. Um, and Moses ends up leading the Israelite people out of slavery and into what they hoped was the promised land that they're theologically still looking for. God love them. Bless. Um, but he is the deliverer of his people. Moses. So she, Moses is. Moses is the deliverer of his people. Right. Okay. But she, so I think it's really fascinating. So the story, the other thing I should just say, like biblically, hi, we know Moses existed. We don't know that Noah did. Noah could entirely be an allegory. Right. But we know that Moses existed. So they, like, she chose the allegorical character. <laughs> And not the literal one, which I also yeah. found interesting. Yeah. Um, and that she saw, like, Noah as a savior, 
when truly the savior of the Israelite people in particular is Moses. Like Moses is the one who leads them through the promised land, leads them through the desert to the promised land. Like every slave spiritual that, that black Americans wrote in slavery harkens back to Moses right. um, and that whole experience. Um, but yeah, Noah is, so it was an odd choice for a name when you're going to turn around and quote two verses from Moses. Yeah. So you might have noticed that I, while you were talking, I was wearing my confused face because usually when I'm taking notes, I just write down Bible quote. And then I, I get to hear, um, Dr. Kristen's theological analysis at the same time as you guys. Um, but I, I'm kind of confused as to why she wouldn't choose Moses as a name. And I mean, she references the Ark and she references herself as the Ark as like a justification for where she's going in her head, which is eventually to ask June to take Noah from her yeah. because because reasons. Um, and she says, maybe yeah. I'm the Ark, maybe I'm the vessel, which also harkens right. back to the flashbacks that we get of, of Clarence, apologies of Clarence, we don't know your And Lydia name. doing the whole, this is your purpose in life. This is your purpose in, in, you know, she has done her duty in this world. That's what Lydia says of, of Clarence after she dies, uh, after the emergency C-section. Um, and so paralleling that that is like the Gilead that is deep, deep within Serena, um, but wh why wouldn't she choose Moses when Moses was also a savior of... He I'm, I'm confused why she would biblically reference Moses yeah, and then choose totally Noah. What, what do you so have for me? First of all, they're a, they're a bunch of generations apart. So um, the if you want to talk about like foundational savior of humanity, like Moses is a couple hundred years after Noah. So the, right, okay. and Noah is also the, one of his sons, he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now Ham is there. That's where we get a lot of the racist, um, yeah. like black people like Ham, the son of Ham is like the a whole other Ham. thing. Yeah. If you Ooh. would like, if you would like explanation on that, let us know. I can do a separate video. Um, but Shem is the good son. And one of his descendants is listed as Abraham. And Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons, sons had Father, Father Abraham. Abraham. Um, and so Abraham is considered both the fa is the father of both the Israelite race and the Arabic race. I'm right, using air quotes they're called, I hate calling them races. Yeah. Um, Abrahamic faiths so is what they're called. Therefore, yes. well, the people, not even the faith, the physical oh, okay. people. Oh, right. Okay. Because um, like Ishmael, who is one of, who is... Um, Abraham's illegitimate son, again, using air quotes, but not born to him by Sarah. Ishmael is the genetic, like, lineage of, of Arab folks. And Isaac, the son to him by Sarah, um, is the genetic marker of Israelite and Hebrew folks. Gotcha. So it's physical and also the faiths, yes. Got it. Um, but the, the physical lineage as well. And lineage is a massive deal in the Bible, obviously. And so therefore... If if Abraham if Abraham is in Noah's lineage, then so is Jesus. Okay. And so and the story that we tell ourselves um, is that all of humanity was destroyed, and Noah and his sons were the ones that started everything over again. So in her theology, okay. everything was destroyed. It starts again with Noah. Gotcha. Um, and I think Moses, but we also don't have a ton about Noah. Like there's, you know, there's a, a small story um, also because there's so many debates over whether or not the flood was literal or not. We know that Moses was a literal person. Yeah. He was a, like, he literally did these things. Um, there's a lot less known about Noah um, outside of really, really conservative circles that just assume things about archaeology and don't learn things about archaeology. <laughs> yeah. um, so Noah's a little bit fuzzier. There's not really verses on him. Okay. Um, there's a lot about faithfulness with him. Like he got mocked a ton and he just showed up and stayed faithful. So that's one of the other things he's going to be mocked a lot, possibly as a son of Gilead. And so, um, all of Noah's neighbors made fun of him because he was building this ark during a time of like 10 years of sunshine or something like that. Right. right, right and he right. was like, no, we're going to need an ark. We're going to need an ark. And so I think that could be a thing too. Like Serena saying, no matter how much your naysayers, you're going to need to continue to build the ark and save humanity and everything else. Right. Um, but Moses is also, as the deliverer, I think she's bringing in the fact that um, 
this sounds kind of crazy, but that June is the deliverer. And that's why she quoted some of those verses to her. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that she actually is referring to the baby as Moses. I think she mm. might be referring to June as Moses. Um, unconfirmed, but that's my theology hat and why I think those scriptures were significant. Well, and that's because, you know, she also calls June an avenging angel mm -hmm. and says, like, that's what you are. And, and, and June says, like, is that what you think of me? Um, and you can see, you know, we've, t we've talked a lot about revenge June and avenging June and like what, what she was trying to get out of all, her, all of her shenanigans in Gilead, um, and all of the decisions that she made. Uh, but that is super fascinating. Um, and, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't read the Testaments you have, but Serena's baby is not a part of the Testaments. There's I no don't boys as part of the Testaments really at think... all as main characters. So as soon as we, it was a him, I mean, yeah. the, the baby that is Nicole, the baby that is Hannah and Aunt Lydia are like the three main Are characters. the three big ones. Yeah. So yeah. We, we don't know where, um, where they're going with this. Um, but I have a lot more trust in them uh, seven episodes into this season than I did at the start of this season. So um, Absolutely. So obviously, I do, I do really wonder what we're going to do with Hannah because in the Testaments, Hannah is still in Gilead and is a true believer. So it's right. going to be really interesting to see if they change that, which I hope they don't because that dynamic ends up being really, really good. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where they go from that. Um, that's, that's fascinating. Um, I really enjoyed that and gave me so much more to think about. The other things I would like to talk about uh, for this episode, I think, is um, two things I thought of while you were explaining that. One, we should talk about the conversation that June and Serena have about um, Fred and why she didn't, why June didn't kill Serena. So I want to talk about that. And then I think we should talk about like maybe kind of what we learned about these two women from this episode. Um, Cause I think we got some real strong things confirmed, especially about our June. Um, but also I think about Serena as well. Um, so I think those are the two things left on my list. Do you have anything else you want to add to that? No, and even the first item there is really brief. I just yeah. thought it was really fascinating that June didn't want to yeah. kill her. Like, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. And I, it's a good through line of the whole series that their bond was always complicated. Yeah. Um, and, so, I mean, like, Fred is a straightforward black and white figure. Like, right. Fred's evil, and that's easy to, to dispense with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think Serena, and when I look at the previews, where, what we're going to get with Lawrence, um, is that a lot of the straightforward people of Gilead are being dealt with. Mm. And the messy people of Gilead are the ones hanging around. And what do you yeah. do with mess when Gilead's an idea? Right. The, the millennial Gilead, as um, we are now referring to the second generation Gilead. Um, yeah, and... Uh, it was just, I'm so glad they gifted us with these conversations. You know, June asking her, like, if it was worth it. And what, like, what a loaded, like, what, but like, why not? Why, you're in a bar and she just gave birth to a baby. Why not ask her? She's, um, she's feverish and, um, like, yeah. why, in vino <laughs> veritas and in fever veritas, evidently. Yeah. <laughs> so why not? Um, but yeah, I wrote in my notes, like, maybe they've been through too much together. And the flashbacks really showed um, that these women always understood each other. Yeah. Way more than any other wife handmade relationship that we've seen. Um, and you know, we've, we've gotten so many pieces of, of early Serena, early Gilead Serena, real hesitant to get a handmaid at all. Um, even still hints that like at the beginning of the first flashback that she has a very personal and intimate relationship with Fred. She's like, you know, I had to, I had to soothe him for, you know, his big speech for the high council or something. Um, so she has a real strong relationship with her husband. Um, and then, you know, maybe she's deluding herself at this time. We don't know, 
about the true nature of Fred. He gets revealed, especially in his relationship with June. Um, but they have like this simpatico where they're kind of rolling eyes at the prayer at the at the birthing circle where the wife is also screaming, which is just one of the most ridiculous things Gilead has done. <laughs> but they're kind of like, mm, crazy, right? I know. Um, and then Serena is has set herself apart from the other wives who are celebrating the birth of the child, clearly waiting to hear what happened to of Clarence. And when June like gives her the look, she's actually sad about it um, yeah. and and grieving the loss of the mother. So I think they wanted us to, to get in this episode that these two women like deeply understand each other. And you're right. I think in a, in different times, they would be friends. Um, and they might still even work themselves towards weird, super complicated friendship um, at the end of all of this, if they both survive. Um, Cause I certainly think we got hints that June uh, in the, in the preview for next week, that June is going to help Serena continue to help Serena um, you know, get out of the detention center and, and keep Noah and all of that. Um, and I think that transitions nicely into what we learned about these women. Um, so for me, I think what, what I wanted to make sure that we said out loud about June was that as confusing as she has been with her motivations at times, and she's gone back and forth between like needing to kill Fred and needing to get Hannah She's killed Fred now. She's very much in the need to get Hannah. And the brilliance of Elizabeth Moss in this episode and showing how much she struggled with helping Serena at times and contemplating leaving her and contemplating taking the baby. The core animating feature of June Osborne is that babies should stay with their mothers and mothers yep. should stay with their babies. Um, and... That is what it came down to. She believes in the miracle of birth. She like she feels very strongly about that and uh, about helping women through that and helping Serena. And I think all of that other stuff, all of that other baggage from Serena kind of went away when she saw a woman in need who was giving birth. And like that is... And then, then you get on top of that the conversation where she convinces her afterwards that, like, no, we're going to the hospital because this is not Gilead and I am not you. Yep. Anything you would like to say about what we've learned or what this episode showed us about June? Serena's a complicated one, man. I'm yeah, I you. think Serena's going to end up being my favorite character in the show. Um, she does not think she's worthy of being a mother. 100%. And Wow, do I identify with that. Um, and also that she is somebody who thought she had a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. And the solution ran away from her. Um, and, like, there's part of me that wishes that they would publish her original book. I know, it's, like, no one actually ever wrote it. But I would love to see, like, where on the spectrum is she? Like, are yeah. we talking, like, I mean, she's really, are we? slightly like good ideas that once someone worked them out she would have been like oh yeah that's not gonna work <laughs> but a totalitarian dictatorship came along and made it work mm -hmm. um you know because she we've compared her a lot to phyllis schlafly and none of phyllis's ideas would have like run like i, I don't believe that phyllis would have wanted gilead either right and so i don't think that serena ever gave herself a moment until that moment in the barn with Noah and, and June to realize that Gilead isn't what she wanted. Hmm. Babies were what she wanted. A yeah. healthy society. I love that whole thing. They're giving him formula. I know. It'll be fine. It's like, she's going to um, be the most granola mom in the history of granola moms. I know I'm already tired. Um, like she's going to, she is going to get caught up in an MLM. You know that. Oh. Is. She is going to get caught up in an MLM. She is going to be selling essential oils. Oh, it's yep. going to be a problem. Yep. Thank God black oxygen organics has been shut down or that girl would be selling dirt, uh, se selling like, yeah. Oh, dirt um, water. She's going to sell dirt water in Canada. She's going to sell dirt that's water that's in Canada. That's the post. Yep. But I think, I really do think that she never wanted Gilead. Um, the way that it came out. That's what this episode taught me. 
Yeah. Um, is in that she, cause she was pretty quick to apologize once we got rid of the Serena Waterford performance that she's been doing for God knows how long. Yeah. Um, and that I love June's response was, I don't want your apology. I want you to raise him right. Yeah. And like, I was just looking back at my notes and, and, and after they have this biblical conversation where she says, you know, maybe I'm the vessel. And then, um, June says like, June has this like wonderful reflection that like, that's what you thought I was. That's what you thought we all were. Yeah. And you didn't see us as humans and you didn't see that we wanted, um, different things and none of that mattered to you. Um, but this and, isn't Gilead and I'm not you, so you matter this, to me. Yeah, but I'm going to show you the different way to do this, um, yeah. which is one of, of empathy and compassion and humanity that that you deserve to live because you are and a honestly, human being. Yeah. Proper Christian theology. Yeah. Like, everyone is a child of God. Everyone, regardless of personality, marital status, sexual choices, everybody is a beloved child of God. And that's why she you says start putting conditions yeah. on that is when you start sliding into Gilead. And that's why she says that is God's will. That, that is, is God's, God's will. will. Um, and then we love a parallel. I even remembered this one. Y'all, you'll be proud of me. I remembered this reference. Um, and we didn't have to ask Brenda or Amy <laughs> to remind us. Um, when she says, do you understand me? That parallels back to that time when she like screamed it at Serena. Yeah. Um, after, uh, she testified, um, in the criminal court, uh, against the Waterfords. Um, but she, she says it like so fiercely and so kindly, like, do you understand me? I'm not letting you die. I'm not letting you die because this isn't Gilead and I'm not you. Um, whew. Uh, yeah, honestly, no notes. Like, great, great episode. Totally understand why why Luke did what he did. Um, that was my only all caps a- notes was me yelling at Luke, really. Um, and then I just wrote, big question, what actually is justice? And we're going to get into that in our Mayday moment. So we really hope that you join us over on the Patreon yep. for that discussion, both theological and legal justice. We've got a lot of thoughts and we'd love to um, love to talk about that. So in the meantime, uh, we know you have already seen episode eight. We have not, um, <laughs> but we've seen the preview and it's going to be really interesting to uh, to watch the the wheelers continue to be the wheelers. Um, really excited for the sneak peek and the revelation of New Bethlehem, which honestly looks like a set on the Truman show. Mm -hmm. Um, It's Gilead Pleasantville. (laughs) Yeah, it really does look like Gilead Pleasantville. So who knows what Larry's got with that. So we're looking forward. uh, We'll be watching it along with you guys. Um, And in the meantime, uh, I am going to, since this got very Pastor Kristen-y, I am going to end it with a benediction, um, which is letting, may you always know that you are a person who is beloved, who is not anyone else's vessel or thing to control, that you are created and delighted over. Um, Whatever that looks like for you, whether you believe that was created by your parents or created by a higher being, you were created. Um, You didn't just spawn into existence and you were created because you are loved. We hope that you feel that deeply in your soul as you move forward throughout your life and that you remember that this isn't Gilead and we are not Serena and we choose each other. See you guys next time. Bye, everybody.